everybody. Welcome to Paso Olivo's Cooking Kitchen for Kids. Uh, we are knocking on the door of 4th of July. Yay! So uh, that is what we're doing today. We are going to be doing berry pizza bites. Um, the uh, little wink to all of this patriotic vibe is that it is going to be red, white, and blue. The red is going to be strawberries, the blue is uh, blackberries, and the white is brie. Um, I did get a memo from my children that apparently some of them don't like brie. I did not know that because two months ago they did, uh, but if your kids are like mine, every month they change. So uh, you can change it for cream cheese, you can change it for goat cheese, you can even, depending on how much you like your kids or if you're dropping them off with a babysitter or the grandparents, uh, put marshmallows on there instead of the cheese. A uh, little less uh, nutritional, but um, you know, if you're putting sugar in them and then pulling the grenade and going, go ahead and do that. I, I feel for you. Uh, so let's get started. Look, this is back. I'm so sorry we didn't have it last week. Um, we've got everything noted down here so that you can have a visual as you are following along. So we've got our pie dough. Um, pie dough is an enigma for me. Everybody else tells me it's easy. I have never ever been able to really nail down pie dough. So there, there are quite a few companies at the store in the frozen food section that have done just a fine job of it. And why should I reinvent the wheel? So I've gone ahead and gotten the pie dough ready made. Shh, don't tell anybody. Um, one cup of sliced strawberries, or sorry, yes, uh, three fourths of a cup of blackberries, an eight ounce brie. So that's just the circle that you find at the store in the deli section. That's the circle of, of brie that's around eight to 10 ounces, so perfect. Um, three tablespoons of the orange blossom honey, half cup of the sweet basil plum balsamic, and a half cup of the Paso Olivo basil olive oil. Keep in mind that we're going to be using that basil olive oil again next week in a frittata, otherwise known as a breakfast pizza. If you put pizza on the end of any sentence, kids will buy into it. So um, breakfast pizza or for the rest of us, it's an Italian frittata and it's fantastic. So if you've got the basil for this week, try not to go through it in a week, although that's very possible because we'll be using it again next week, this time next week, two o'clock Friday, we'll see you there. But let's get started on our uh, berry pizza bite. So step one, get that pizza dough, get it rolled out. Um, I had a, a circle, so I created rectangle squares with that dough. How I did it is, I'm back, um, the pizza cutter. So you don't have to try to slam through it with a butter knife, don't do that. Get yourself a pizza cutter, works perfectly, and gets you uh, nice squares or rectangles or something of the sort. There we go. So we're gonna start off with this and then we're going to get our basil olive oil and we're just gonna brush on the basil olive oil. If you, oh, we're working with kids here. What am I thinking? Kids, get to the sink, wash your hands. They're grubby. I know, I saw you holding that worm this morning. That's gross. Go wash your hands. We're not touching food with the, the worm hands. And then after that, come on back. And the reason I say that is because I have a brush for this. But you may not. And if you don't have a brush, it's okay. If you have clean little hands, you could probably put a finger in and just kind of use a finger to paint. So let's do a little finger painting with our basil olive oil um, and just get that all over each piece. If you are using you, the um, pie dough, keep in mind it's not going to expand too much. So it's not like cookies or puff pastry where it's gonna get bigger. It's going to stay around the same. So you can put the pieces side to side. Um, a little side note on this as well, as long as it's cool enough, you don't have to use a pizza cutter. You could, if you're really feeling patriotic, uh, you can get crazy with different shapes of cookie cutters. So that's also fun. Um, and then you've got a beautiful shape if you're into displaying. I, I like to think I am, but when it comes down to it, I'm no Martha Stewart. That's what it comes down to, but at least I've leaned into that. Uh, so keep that in mind, you can use those. You don't have to necessarily do the little rectangles. So we've painted the oil on. Okay, so that's the first use of the basil olive oil. The second use of the basil olive oil is going to be with the strawberries. Let me, you guys have this memorized, right? 
Everything's locked into your head. Yes, of course it is. I'm going to put this down just in case you need to refer to it again. But we're going to go to the directions. Here we are. So, rolling out the dough, brushing the dough with basil olive oil. Get your oven preheated to 350. I hate it when recipes tell you at the very end that you're supposed to pop something in the oven and the oven is stone cold. Put the oven on at 350, get that loaded up, um, put a tank top on because now it's warm in the house, right? Um, and then we move on to getting the blackberries, the sweet basil plum balsamic, and the honey all together. This is the most kid-friendly part of the whole thing probably. Why? Because you get to mush. And mushing is every kid's favorite thing, I think. Mushing and candy. Okay, so we've got our beautiful blackberries. I mean, we're using everything that is just popping up in the stores and the farmer's markets right now. We really want to stay healthy and fresh. That's part of what Pasolivo is all about, trying to do um, neighborhood shopping, trying to do local. Okay, so all of our olive oil is grown on our estate. Everything is bottled, pressed right there in-house. So that's the same kind of nod that I'm trying to do today with this recipe, is try to um, kind of keep it local, neighborhood friendly. So we've got our blackberries, we've got our balsamic, we're tossing that in there. We're also getting our honey. So we're gonna have that sweet tart thing going on. Honey going in. Okay, so if you've tried this honey, it is like no other. And if you are following along and purchased this honey for the during the bundle, good for you, because we sold out of it and we keep selling out of it. So you got it, good job. The rest of you who are like, yeah, and I didn't get it because we were sold out. It's, it's gonna be back in, so go ahead and keep trying us. Um, this is one of those honeys that's just insane. You're not, you're not going to be able to go back to store bought honey again, because it's just a beautiful, mature honey like you want to put it on dried cheeses like parmesans and manchego cheese as well as put it in your tea as well as your kids want it on their oatmeal so and it's and it's healthy and it's beautiful so this is one of those honeys that once you buy you're like oh this i'm using this for everything so and maybe you won't share it with the kids after this that's okay you can do that you made them um so start mushing we just want to um, get everything kind of macerated. That's a nod to the, um, the wine shine uh, kind of pairing that we did a couple weeks ago, where you get a flavor, you're getting those berries, you're infusing it with the honey, you're infusing it with the balsamic, so you're kind of smushing it all up together, non-professional term. And you're gonna let those sit and hang out. Those will eventually go on the cooktop. Um, and we're gonna warm it up and kind of get it simmering so it cooks down a little bit. But right now, they're just hanging out. And if you've got a little one who's just really good at mashing, just, there you go, hon. Keep on mashing. We'll keep going with the rest of the recipe. Remember that basil olive oil? Let's see what step I'm on. Let's see if I've jumped. Hey, I'm, I'm following along with my own steps. This is amazing, okay. So, you guys remember the basil olive oil, right? Who can forget? It is the sweetheart of our flavored olive oils. Uh, I, I feel like it's my hook, line, sinker when I do tastings. Sorry guys, now you know my tricks. Everybody who walks in, if you've tasted that basil olive oil, you will fall in love. It's, uh, I, I've never tasted a basil olive oil like this. Um, I've kind of stopped trying because there's just, there's just nothing like it. It's like biting into fresh basil leaf. Um, the way that we do it is getting four to 500 pounds of fresh organic basil to one ton of olive, olives, literally hand slicing basil for hours straight, putting it into the hammer mill and getting the basil olive oil, at this, or basil oil at the same time as the olives, the olive oil. So it's just, it's gorgeous. We don't infuse it. Infusion would be like a tea where you're steeping it. This is, everybody's in the pool. It's amazing. Okay, so I'm gonna take this basil olive oil and I'm putting it into the fresh berries. I know, I just blew your mind. Hang with me, I promise you. This is insane. Okay, so I don't know if you've ever tried basil with 
uh, strawberries before, but if you've been following along, and I know you have been, thank you, um, but you remember um, Chef Libri from Thomas Hill Organics, uh, probably, what, three, four weeks ago now? He mentioned the fact that strawberries and basil are just beautiful best friends. I kind of didn't believe him. I mean, I believe him because I, he's, he's a, an artist, but I was like, oh, okay. Try this, sneak one right now, grab a fresh strawberry, put it in your mouth and get your mind blown because it is gorgeous. It's so fresh, the two flavors just hang out together and are surprisingly good together. So, what we've done with creating these two mixes is this guy right here and this guy right here. We kind of inadvertently created two separate recipes to put on to our final recipe because that right there on Greek yogurt or as a side, as a dessert on uh, vanilla ice cream, same with this on um, uh, goat cheese, on pancakes, on oatmeal, I mean, you name it, these guys together or separately are beautiful as is. I mean, if you wanted to muddle that into a cocktail, that would also be amazing. So. Those two are um, little mini recipes within the big recipe that you can take with you from here on out and grow yourself. Uh, and we're going to put them all together on these little pizzas today for patriotic purposes. But I just wanted to give you kind of um, a little heads up of what you can do with these olive oils, with these balsamics, just as a side. Okay, so we've built these guys. We're going to now take our dough squares, plop them in the oven. We're not fully cooking them because we're going to put the brie, remember the brie? We're putting the brie on there and then melting the brie. But first we want to cook them up a little bit so we're not chewing on raw dough because unless it's cookie dough, I'm not doing that. Uh, so this is going in the oven, 350 for about five minutes, that's it. And then we're gonna pull it and plop the brie on top, okay? So I'm not leaving you, I promise. I'm here. In we go, closing up. Timer, five minutes. Go, enter. Okay, so while that's cooking down there, this is cooking up top. So we've got that, the blackberries, those are gonna go on the cooktop and we're just gonna warm them up enough to have them bubble up and we're going to simmer them down a little bit. You could keep that going for the long run and get really nice and syrupy um, and then that would be amazing on vanilla ice cream or waffles or I mean, you name it, but uh, this is just a little, little bit so that it's kind of all blended together and mixed in well together. Oh, that's gone in there. All Since we've got the timer on for the oven, that works out perfectly for both. While I, all of that's happening, let's talk about the flag. Because I learned some things about the flag that in the last couple days that I did not know about. I do have to say that one of kind of the, the main connections I have with 4th of July is that one of my sons, it's the, his birthday. So uh, the whole house is red, white, and blue. Um, and I now want to learn a little bit more about what that red means, what the white means, what the blue means. So, um, the flag that we have currently today was adopted in 1960, so really not that long ago, July 4th, so it's, it's anniversary coming up tomorrow, in 1960s. Uh, that's the current five, or 50 star flag that we have now. Uh, the white on it, they say, means purity and innocence, the red is hardiness and valor, and the blue is vigilance, perseverance, and justice. So that was the, the, those were the symbolic meanings of the colors according to Charles Thompson. He was a secretary of the uh, Continental Congress from 1774 to 1789. So that was something that he kind of 
pin to the different colors. And that's actually been the general idea of the colors ever since even Ronald Reagan kind of gave a nod to, to those general ideas for the three colors and what they meant and what they symbolized. Um, so when Alaska, this is a fun one, because if you're working with kids, this is something that's really gonna get them energized because kids love it when teachers are wrong. Uh, <laughs> so when Alaska and Hawaii were being considered as states, uh, they had to brainstorm a different flag because there are 50 stars because there are 50 states. And at that point, there were 48. So um, they started brainstorming, that was in the 1950s, and there were uh, more than, 1,500 designs that were given in to President Dwight D. Eisenhower. And he had to, I'm sure it wasn't just him, but they had to filter through what the designs were going to be and what was going to be the final flag. Uh, there were a few that ended up being exactly what it is now, but the one that got the most media and the most focus was the fact that there, there, there was a 17-year-old boy, let's see his name, uh, Robert G. Hepp of Lancaster, Ohio, in 1958, and as a school project, he created the flag, our flag. And he turned it in, guess what kids? Did he get an A? Because I mean, we have a flag everywhere, right? So he obviously got an A. No, no he didn't, he got a B minus. He got a B minus, and he joked with his teacher, he said, listen, if it gets, if it's, gets chosen, we need to work on what that grade is. And the teacher laughed about it and said, sure, sure, I will change your grade to an A if that ends up being the flag that is chosen. He got an A, right? He got an A. So keep that in mind, kids. Fight for what you feel is, is, is true to you. Uh, so that was kind of an exciting thing to know. I also, I know this because um, I have a lot of people in my family who are extremely, extremely true to the flag, and so they know all about this. But did you know that the flag cannot hang out outside in the dark. It can't, it has to be lit up. You either take it down, sunrise to sunset, or you, t you light it up so it has to be illuminated throughout the night so everybody can see it. So that's something to keep in mind as well. It can't be upside down because that means you're in distress. And calm down, nobody's in that much distress right now, so calm down. Um, let's see, fly as we know should never touch anything like the floor or merchandise, or uh, the ground, or water. Um, and when displayed with other flags, it must go up first and come down first, and it must be in the center and the tallest. Makes sense, right? All right, let's check on our food. How's the history lesson? Let's check on our food, let's see what's happening. Okay, we've got some bubbles going, the timer's going, fantastic. Done and done. Turns out, it takes five minutes to learn everything you need to know about the flag. <laughs> All right, let's get these guys, we can turn this guy off. Let's get these guys out. So they're bubbly. They've got that nice uh, pie slash basil smell to them, so that's fantastic. And then what we're gonna do is, do you guys remember the brie that I had on the shopping list there? Um, This is the brie. Uh, this is the round just cut up and then sliced in the middle. Different, you know, different shapes in the square. You can do any type of shape you want. I've just been boring and I'm doing the rectangles. Technically, you could take those rectangles, do a little white, red, blue, and try to recreate the flag. So depending on what age your kiddos are, put them to work. Give them a task and see if they can do it. Uh, we'll put a piece of brie on each piece of or each rectangle of dough. Here we go. And I know we call these um, pizza bites, which is why they're nice and flat. But I will say I experimented and I used puff pastry at one point as well. And if for some reason the pizza concept isn't up your alley, puff pastry does beautifully. It raises up, you cut it just like this, same amount of time in the oven, raises up, then you can separate it and put all of these goodies inside it and it looks beautiful. So keep that in mind if you wanna do that in, as well. You can drizzle a little bit of honey on the top of it. Uh, those fly. 
And you're thinking about something to bring to the barbecue, you're thinking about something to kind of wow your friends and family that they haven't tried before, either one of these is gonna blow their mind. And it's so fresh and it's beautiful and it's got a little nod to being healthy too, so that's what we want. We wanna keep a little bit of healthy, um, high quality ingredients all together. Um, because then you can show your family that you love them because you wanna make sure that you're taking care of them. Don't just give them mac and cheese, although I do. But, you know, branch out. So, I'm gonna put these guys back in the oven to toast up or warm up the, the brie. I just want it kind of melty so it stays on. It's basically a way to glue everything back on, and it also tastes fantastic. Again, keep in mind that you can put, if you are, if you do have a finicky eater and you do wanna do like marshmallows or something, just one, even cut one marshmallow in half and plop it on, and that's got the white, so we've got the red, white, and blue still. We're still honoring the holiday, but we're doing it in a way that the kiddos will actually eat, apparently. So I ended up just eating all the brie off my kids' things, so I was a happy camper. Um, but yeah, branch out, talk to your kids about what they like. That's what's great about recipes like this is that you're making it yours um, and you'll be able to play with it. It goes without saying that we love seeing your pictures. You guys are creative, you're fantastic with our products. I see it on Instagram all the time, I'm sure you do. You're watching us on Instagram, so you're followers. Um, but please, send us pictures, do the little at Paso Levo so that we know. Um, follow us, subscribe to our YouTube, because all of this is on our YouTube so that you can see just back-to-back -back how-tos and all the different recipes and all the interactions with the distilleries and restaurants we've had throughout the summer, so it's all right there. So you can kind of look back on things. Okay, I bought the basil, what else can I do with it? So um, that's the plus about being on our Facebook, on our Instagram, on our YouTube. Um, but also uh, being able to show us what you've created and your creativity, we love that. You guys are fantastic. You think outside the box. I just saw some cookies on Instagram that are blowing my mind and I really need to know what's in them. <laughs> There's the rosemary and chocolate chip. Oh my gosh, those are fantastic. Anyway, so we're melting the cheese five-ish minutes. You can kind of keep an eyeball on those. And then what we're going to be doing, get a, a teaspoon or a regular spoon, or if you've got kids with clean hands, they can start using their fingers for the strawberries at least, the blackberry, not because it's still a little toasty. Um, but then we're going to be spooning those on to the final product. Um, while we're melting our cheese, do you guys have any questions? I'm here for you, ask away. It can be about this. I'm actually gonna show you the ingredients for next week as well, because it is a grocery list of ingredients. So I wanna make sure that you guys are ready prepped for it. Because you're following along this week, you already have some of the Paso Levo products. I just want you to expand and have all of it available to you. So um, key, uh, I will show that to you at the end, but I'm gonna keep an eye out on my cheese here and then bring it out in a second. Yeah, perfect. Alrighty, so look how it's nicely melted. I could totally, I could, I could chow on that right now. I think what I like about adding the fruit to it is that it makes me feel less guilty. Is that a thing? I think, I think that might be the case. So I, I put the, uh, the fruit on it, and then it gets all nice and fresh tasting. And I feel like, yeah, see, I'm healthy. I've got some vitamin C's and B's. I'm sure all the, all the vitamins are in there. Um, all right, so I'm gonna take the berries and put it back into the bowl that I had. Try to cool it down a little bit, especially if there's gonna be little hands helping with this. We just wanna make sure that everybody's safe. If you guys have a, a flag fact, you can let us know about your flag fact. I know that um, the blue part with the stars is actually called the union. And the union should always be in the upper left hand corner. So if you see somebody wearing a flag, from what I understand, those stars should be close to the heart. But upper left hand corner, so even if it's going down or if it's on a wall somewhere, the union should be upper left hand corner. Um, all right, so let's bring this over. I brought cooling racks, but I don't think I need them, but that's 
Again, also because I don't have little hands all up in the business. If you do, consider cooling racks just because then you are going to separate from all of that um, hot metal that surrounds. Uh, as we always say, kids outsource all of the dangerous stuff to the, to the parents. They, uh, they're good. They don't need all of their fingers. Okay, you guys don't deal with the sharp objects or the heat. Make the parents do it. Make the parents do the heavy work. And then you guys can do the fun smushing work. Um, I'm going to grab, let's see. Got a spoon, and I'm going to be spooning. And what I like about this mixture that we've created is that it does have a little bit of sauce with it. So it has that balsamic honey sauce. Oh yeah, there's a question. No question. Five more minutes. Oh, yay! Okay, so perfect. I mean, look at that timing. That's insane. Did not even plan that. Um, all right, so we've got the berries on there. We're gonna plop those on. And the smell that happens with the kind of unification of the berries and the brie and that fresh basil olive oil, oh, so good. Okay, there we go. And you want some of that sauce on there. You want some of that, that juiciness on there, so let it, Kind of run run over it a bit because that's what's going to get those flavors going sorry i hate leaving you hi I'm back um and let's get those strawberries on there so you guys get a final visual of what it should look like and you saw the pictures as well on instagram so you have an idea of what it's going to look like um but again you can make it yours and that's the best part is that you are playing with it and recreating it and I don't know, maybe adding a little bit of, of powdered sugar to the top or adding um, our sugar and spice to the top. You can play with it. Um, I don't think kosher salt would be too bad on this either, actually. So you can, you can kind of test it out. All right, final one. Okay. So. This is the general gist. I'm gonna walk it over to you guys so you can take a look at it. This is what we're looking for. I wish you could smell it. I always talk about smell vision This is what we're talking about. Those melty pieces of brie, the fresh bite of the, the berries and that crunch of the, the fresh strawberry with the uh, pastry, just gorgeous. So display this on a patriotic pan and you are set. There we go. I also want to show you, I promised you that I was gonna show you uh, the ingredients for next week, so I'm gonna do that. Let me bring that over. Whoop, there we go. So, next week we're doing the frittata. And it's not as difficult as it sounds, because I was a little scared of it, but it's not. Um, not only is it, just, it's, it's kind of, I want to say upgraded scrambled eggs, but it's not. It's not like short. It, there's a lot of great healthy veggies in it, and also it's one of those things that you can cut a slice, serve it. The rest, of the next day, serve another piece. It's one of those that you can rewarm, and because of the cheese and all the veggies in it, it reheats beautifully. So you can pack it with you for a lunch or something like that. So this is this is one of those happy mom hacks that is going to work with you across the board. So. From the Pasolivo bundle, you're going to be getting the basil olive oil, the roasted garlic sea salt. The reason I paired this one up with our, oh, everybody's favorite, the spicy Italian blend, is because this doesn't have any salt with it. So it's nice to pair up with that roasted garlic sea salt. These three can do no wrong. It's like a little mini pizza, all of that on popcorn, intense. Um, and then our aged balsamic, aged 18 plus years in barrels in Italy. It's fantastic. Uh, so this guy's gonna be drizzled on the top of the frittata. That's your bundle. That bundle is gonna take you way farther than just the frittata, but the frittata is a great place to start and then you can branch out from there. You're gonna thank me, you're welcome. Uh, so if you don't have any other questions for me, 
that has been our cooking kitchen for kids. Thank you so much for joining me. Happy 4th of July. Uh, stay safe and stay happy. Uh, please make sure you post this, uh, the pictures that you're doing, all the cooking that you're doing. Um, we love hearing from you. Come to our tasting rooms. And um, also we have that club to join. So if you do fall in love with this stuff and if you keep on following us and buying, just join the club, then you get a discount on everything. So why not? Uh, let them know that you have been watching and that you followed along and decided to just be part of our group, okay? We'll talk to you soon. See you next Friday at 2. Bye, guys.